What do we do? Well, I think we can do a lot. So here is the issue. Why does it matter so much? Because what we're finding is that this generation has no grit. This quality of grit has been studied for the last 10 years at the University of Pennsylvania. And this is how it's defined. Passion and perseverance in pursuit of long-term goals. And one of my mentors is Angela Duckworth, whose work I was exposed to. And in Creating Your Best Life, I think I wrote the first chapter for the mass market about what is grit. The reason it matters so much is grit has been called the secret to success. Angela Duckworth won the MacArthur Genius Prize in 2013 because of the significance of her work and what she's finding. Um, and uh, you know, the, the issue is that when you have grit, you have greatness. And we don't have as much greatness as previous generations because they don't have grit. Wherever you see grit, you see greatness. Um, and so Angela has done this, a lot of this cutting, you know, looking through all of these excellence in interviews, composers, chess players, um, athletes, um, people who've risen to the top of their craft in one way or another. And what she's found is they have these qualities. So she devised something that you all should take, and I think all of your clients should take it too. It's called the grit scale. It's free. And it's a 12-item scale. And what's so interesting about this little grit scale is that it, it determines some things that no one's ever been able to figure out. For example, the grit scale has now determined who will make it through the first summer at West Point, called Beast Barracks. Now, they used to work off something called the whole candidate score. And this was how they thought they figured out who was going to make it at West Point. And that was you know, teacher recommendations, leadership training, GPAs, all kinds of things that they thought indicated who was going to be a leader and who was not going to quit. What they found was that this little 12-item grit scale is now the key determiner, number one determinant, of who drops out at West Point and who stays. The grit scale also predicts a few other things that are fascinating. It predicts who finals at the National Spelling Bee. At the age of 12, they found that the kids who have grit are the ones who didn't get, you know, every year they get a little bit further, a little bit further, a little bit further. They've also found that people who have grit do a lot of the hard work by themselves, not with props, not with adults. People who have grit do hard work often alone, and they hate the hard work as much as any of us hate hard work. But what, what the thing is, they find a way to suck it up and do it. That's a piece of what distinguishes greatness from eliteness, or even good from great or great to elite. It also has been found to determine who, who finishes Teach for America, which is a very rigorous two-year teaching program. It's very difficult to get selected for Teach for America, but they have the same problem everyone else does, which is how do we figure out who's the keeper? Who's going to keep showing up in these underprivileged areas in teaching? So the grit scale is now the predictor of that. It is also the, the predictor of who makes special forces teams. And most recently, it has uh, found who is going to make partner, which women make partner at a law firm. So this quality, this quality of grit and passion that is missing from this generation, this is why it matters, is because these are the things that we need to be finishers in life. Not just at short-term goals, it's at the long-term goals. Um, and so I, I did become very obsessed by this when I was writing Creating Your Best Life. And, um, and have spent a lot of time thinking about it and writing about it because, as I said, goal-setting theory says something very important. And for those of you who made it to my talk yesterday morning, you know, there's two kinds of goals. There's learning goals and performance goals. And the best kinds of performance goals are, are what's called challenging and specific. And what that means is they're outside your fingertips. They're outside your grasp. You have to do something hard. And this research out of the University of San Francisco has also found that at the end of every day, including today, you're all going to do this, you will scan your days for what you did that was hard. All of us do it whether we know it or not. And the thing is, the only things the research fi finds that we're proud of are the things we did that were outside our comfort zone. And this is in direct contrast to the whole 20th century approach to goal, goal accomplishment of uh, the law of attraction. If you want it, you can have it. If you want it, you can have it. It just doesn't matter how hard you work. All you need to do is, is want it. Um, but at the end of every day, all of us are scanning our days. So if you aren't going out of your comfort zone, and you aren't doing hard things, and you don't even know what hard is, how do you develop grit? Well, you don't. You don't. Well, there are a few things you can, you can do, which is what we're going to talk about. Finally, in SEAL training, there's a bell. 
a brass bell that hangs in the center of the compound for all the students to see. All you have to do to quit, all you have to do to quit is ring the bell. Ring the bell and you no longer have to wake up at five o'clock. Ring the bell and you no longer have to be in the freezing cold swims. Ring the bell and you no longer have to do the runs, the obstacle course, the PT, and you no longer have to endure the hardships of training. All you have to do is ring the bell to get out. If you want to change the world, don't ever, ever ring the bell. So that's Admiral McRaven. How many of you saw his commencement speech last year at the University of Texas? OK, go watch it. Go watch it. I believe that we are hungry to become tougher. I believe that there is a real desire and, and kind of um, zeitgeist where people want to be like he was the head of um, Navy SEAL training. And he gave a commencement speech that went viral, which I think supports my theory that it's just people don't know how. People don't know how. And this is the burning question in the grit research right now is we know how important it is, we know how to measure it, but how do people become grittier? And this is where a lot of my thinking is going. So when I saw this commencement speech last year at the University of Texas go viral, it's called 10 Ways to Change the World. He basically you know, broke down SEAL training, special forces training, into 10 things that he learned. And you know, people are flocking to special forces training camp. People want to know what it takes to be elite. These these movies are proliferating. Um, now we've got CrossFit, which is very hard. People want to be tougher. People long, they really long to identify with this kind of, um, this kind of behavior. They just don't know how. And I believe as coaches, that is a piece of what our responsibility is, to know how and to begin to teach other people how to do it. He, he made it down to 10 things. So please watch it. That last one about not being a quitter is one of the main reasons why gritty people get to the finish line. They don't quit. Interestingly enough, one of the biggest surveys, a 15-year survey by Bruce Hetty in Europe, found that when they, the, most, the happiest people did three things differently, the, the most important one was, is they woke up every single day to hard, clear-cut goals. Hard, clear-cut goals. Flourishing people wake up every day, and they don't react. They're proactive. But they wake up to hard, clear-cut goals. And the other two things they do is they don't make excuses, and they don't quit. So that's, that's grit. So history is made by people who have passion and perseverance and who don't quit. And I just want to run a few of these by you, because I think our world is different because they existed and they didn't quit. Take Abraham Lincoln. He lost 12 of 14 elections. Um, he lost his mother to milk fever. His, his biography is absolutely a study in grit. And he was so devoted to the cause of ending slavery that he lost his life over it. But no matter how many arguments he got in, no much how, man, how much politicking he had to do, he didn't quit. Can you imagine where our country would be if he had just said, this is too hard for me? I need a cuddler, you know? <laughs> Or a dorm room that has 10 pillows? I mean, can you imagine where we would be if that had been his outlook on life? 